Miss Brianne, and welcome back to our Let's Get Ready series. And this is the series that is designed for young children, el elementary school children in grades pre-kindergarten all the way to third grade. And the goal here is to introduce and pra have allow practice of skills that will be needed in order for young students to be successful in their elementary school careers. Now skills that it, that you guys will be learning while you're in this program are choosing just right books, choosing nonfiction books, handwriting, vocabulary, phonics, and all that fun stuff. Now this session is for students who are in second grade and want to learn what types and practice the types of skills that they will need in order to be successful in third grade a year from now as well as for students who are already in third grade who just want to review what they already learned the previous year. Alright, so we got some fun activities today and they, they do involve handwriting but it's fun handwriting. But before we do that I am going to be reading a story. Now you know the drill. Usually, would I will I only usually read one story in this program due to the length of the books, and eventually it's going to get to the point where we're probably going to be only reading a chapter at a time as we increase the difficulty. And we are increasing the difficulty. We did increase the difficulty of a little bit of the books last month. So we're going to stick to books in that level. They're going to have more words per page. There's going to be some words that are a bit more challenging. But if you're able to follow along, that is great. Probably half, I'll point to the words ha until halfway through the story and then we are going to, and then I will read without pointing to the words. But. The book, the story I'm going to read today is called Henry and Mudge and the Best Day of All. And this is part of the Ready to Read series, which is a registered trademark of Simon & Schuster, Inc. Now, the author of this book is Cynthia Ryland, and the author is the person who writes the words to the story. The illustrator is Susie Stevenson, and the illustrator is the person who draws the pictures in the story. And then we have the publisher, which is that company or organization that puts the book together into print and sends it to the bookstores to sell. And the publisher for this book is Aladdin Paperbacks, which is an imprint of the Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing Division, which is also part of Simon & Schuster Inc. All right, with that being said, are we ready to begin? Okay, here we go. And because it's a, the books are getting longer, sometimes they are divided into chapters. And this book is divided into four chapters. The first day of May, chapter one. Chapter two is A Color from Morning. Chapter three is Crackers from the Sky. And chapter four is Best Day. So now we're starting to read by chapters like one of those bigger books that you may see your older siblings read. So we ready? Here we go. The first day of May. On the first day of May, Henry woke up early and said to his big, big dog Mudge, I'm having a birthday today. Mudge wagged his tail, rolled over, and snored. Looks like Henry's very excited about his birthday, but Mudge isn't. What do you think? Do you think it's going to be a great birthday for Henry? What do you think, boys and girls? Well, let's continue. Mudge, said Henry, Wake up! I'm having a birthday today. Mudge wagged, rolled to the so other side, and snored some more. Yeah, it looks like Mudge isn't too thrilled 
about Matt Henry's birthday. It looks like Mudge wants to sleep. Mudge, said Henry, birthday cake. Mudge opened one eye. Ice cream, said Henry. Mudge opened the other eye. So it took the, it took treats to sound a treat to mention the treats to wake Mudge up. That's like a, do a typical dog, huh, boys and girls? All right, let's keep going. Lot and lots and lots of crackers, said Henry. Mudge jumped up. He shook Henry's hand. All right, so now Mudge wants to join the birthday party because crackers are involved. Who has a pet at home? All right, for those of you who have a pet, have a pet at home, what's your pet's favorite treat? Yeah, different pets have different favorite treats. Mudge's favorite treat is crackers. Henry was having a birthday, and Mudge would be having crackers. The first day of May looked pretty good. Sounds like a good day so far, huh, boys and girls? What do you think, though? Is it going to continue being a good day? Well, why don't we read along to find out? All right, now we're on to chapter two, A Colorful Morning. Balloons were all over Henry's house. Pink ones, orange ones, green ones, yellow ones. They were in the bathroom. They were in the kitchen. They were in the living room, and the porch was full of them. All right, who can show? Who can point to the pink balloons in this in this page? All right, who can point to the orange balloons on the on the page, boys and girls? All right, who can point to the green balloons? And who can point to the yellow balloons? All right, good job, boys and girls. You, you still remember your colors. And co different colors are a great thing, especially if you're an artist. Dad likes balloons, Henry told Mudge. Mudge licked a yellow one and wagged. I don't know about that. Balloons don't taste very good, huh, boys and girls? Henry's father came into the house. He was carrying a camera. Pictures, cried Henry's father. Oh, no, Henry whispered too much. Dad likes pictures, too. Uh, it looks like it doesn't, it seems like a little less of a good day for Henry. Do you think Henry likes pictures, boys and girls? What do you think? Judging by what I just read. Yeah, probably not. Who likes having their picture taken? Raise your hand. And who doesn't really like having their picture taken? It's probably 50-50. Some people like having pictures take their picture taken, some people don't. Personally, I myself do not like having my picture taken either. So I can understand Henry why Henry doesn't like it. Let's move on.
Henry's father took lots of pictures. He took one of Henry. He took one of Mudge. He took one of Henry and Mudge. He took one of Henry and Mudge and Henry's mother. Then the bookcase took one of all four of them. After the pictures, Henry's mother fixed Henry's favorite breakfast. Pancakes with strawberries. The family ate and ate and ate. When they were done, they had four very sticky red mouths. The first day of May was looking even better. So it looks like the first day of May became a good day again. Henry got his favorite breakfast. And I should, pancakes are a great breakfast. What's your favorite breakfast, boys and girls? So many different people have different favorite breakfasts. Some people like pancakes, some people like waffles, some people like French toast, some people like cereal, and some people like eggs. The, the good thing about breakfast is that there's, a diff, there's many different types of breakfast foods, so there's something out there for everybody. All right, let's move along. Okay, so now we're going into the third chapter, Crackers from the Sky. So I'm going to keep reading along. I'm going to stop pointing to the words, though, for the second half of this book. But still, please follow along with me, okay? All right, here we go. Crackers from the Sky. Henry had invited his friends for a party. They came at 3 o'clock. At first, everyone was shy. No one knew what to do. Then, Henry's mother said, everybody outside. What do you think they're going to do outside, boys and girls? What do you think? Well, let's free to find out what happened. Ooh, look at all the fun games. Don't they look like a lot of fun, boys and girls? Let's see what they are. In the backyard, Henry's mother and Henry's father had fixed games. There was ring toss. There was go fishing. There were potato sack races. Ooh, lots of fun. And hanging from a tree was a big blue pinata shaped like a donkey. That sounds like fun, huh, boys and girls? Let's see what other fun activities there are. The winners at Ring Toss got decoder rings. The winners at Go Fishing got baby goldfish. The winners at Potato Sack Races got bags of potato chips. Finally, it was time for the piñata. Henry's father tied a cloth over Henry's eyes. He put a stick in Henry's hand. He whispered a message in Henry's ear. Then, Henry started to swing. Who's ever hit the piñata, boys and girls? If you've hit a piñata, what comes out of it? What do you think? What comes out of the pinata once you hit it? And you break it open. Well, if you break the pinata, boys and girls, usually candy comes out. And that's a nice treat for everybody, huh? Well, let's see if Henry gets the pinata. One, everyone shouted. Two, three. Mudge was 
swagging hard. Four! On the fourth swing, the pinata cracked open. Out fell suckers, another word for lollipops, and bubblegum, and taffy, and hundreds of little crackers. Everyone was happy, and Mudge most of all. He never knew that crackers could come from the sky. Now what do you think, boys and girls? Did, did the crackers really fall from the sky? No, they came out of the pinata. But let's see what else happens. All right, chapter four, best day. After the games, Henry's parents brought out a big bowl of cherry nut ice cream and a very wide birthday cake. Sounds yummy, huh? The cake looked like Henry's fish tank. It had blue water, colored rocks, and stripped and spotted, striped and spotted fish. Mudge sniffed and sniffed. Maybe it looked like water, but it smelled like cake. After the fish tank cake was eaten up, it was time to open presents. Red bows, purple paper, big cards, Everything went flying in the air. Let's see what kind of good gifts Henry got. Henry got an airplane model, a robot, a stuffed snow leopard, and a basketball. He also got a box of dog treats. These must be for you, Henry told Mudge. So, not only did Henry get a good gift, some good gifts, but Mudge got a good gift as well. Which is also good. So both of them had a great day. When the party was over, everyone went home. They all had lots of taffy and bubblegum and suckers and baby fish and potato chips. They were full of cake and ice cream. Some of them were full of crackers. So it looks like everybody had a great time at the party. What did you think, boys and girls? Well, let's wrap up. Henry and Henry's parents and Henry's big dog, Mudge, sat quietly in the backyard and closed their eyes, they listened to the birds. They rested. And each dreamed about birthday wishes on the best day of all. Okay, that was the end of the story. So what did you think, boys and girls? Did you enjoy this story? Does it make you think about birthday, birthday parties you may have had when you were younger or maybe a birthday party that's coming up? And did the activities that you saw in the story look like fun, boys and girls? Do you remember any of those activities? If so, think of, name a few. Well, we had the potato sack races, the fish, go fish game, the ring toss game. All sounds like a lot of fun. If you, if you remember one of your birthday parties, what did you do for your birthday? Did you play a lot of games? Did you have a cake? Or did you even have ice cream? And what was your cake like? And also, did you get good presents? Or did you get a lot of presents that were fun, I should say? Well, 
Birthdays can be a lot of fun, especially when you're young. And it looks like Henry had a great birthday in this store book. I hope you enjoyed it, and I certainly enjoyed reading it to you. But it's time to move on to our activity. So I am going to zoom into my workspace before we begin. So bear with me for one minute. little camera glitch here. I'm sorry about that. All right. So the idea of the decoder ring in the Henry and Mudd story gave me idea of kind of like a secret agent activity to practice your handwriting. And secret agents have a lot of cool stuff. They have, they can write in code. They have decoder devices. Now, writing in code is fun, but have boys and girls, have you ever written in invisible ink before? How cool is you, do you think that would be writing in a message to give to your friend in invisible ink? Does that sound like fun? Well, today's activity I'm going to be teaching you a couple of ways to do invisible ink. So you can write a message complete and it will be completely invisible to anybody, but it's but your friend who will know what to do to reveal the message. Now there are many different types of invisible ink methods. We have the lemon juice method. Well, the lemon juice and heat method. We have the baking soda method. Uh, we have the crayon method, and we have the pencil, well, crayon watercolor method, and we have the pencil and pressure method. Now, before I begin, these ideas are from the website WikiHow. So, if you're interested in this, as well as in other similar activities, please click on the web link in the video description. Now, today I'm going to be demonstrating only two invisible link techniques today. And these are very simple and you can do this, you can easily do this at home. And it's easy, easy and cheap, parents. Uh, the simplest one, the cheapest one, that uses the least amount of materials is the pencil and pressure method, which I am going to be demonstrating first. And you just need two simple, simple materials. Now, when you register for this program, you got most of the materials in your craft kit, in your kit already. But some of your materials that you would have gotten are two pieces of computer paper. But also make sure you have a pencil as well. So that's all you really need. Two pieces of a thin computer paper. It should not be too thick because you really need the pressure to go onto the second sheet of paper and a pencil. So what you do, so now you have those, here's what you do. You take two pieces of paper, you're going to stack them together. So one piece of paper has to be over the other. So make sure you do that, boys and girls. Then the next thing you're going to do is take your pencil, and if you don't have a pencil, colored pencil works okay too. And as hard as you can, without ripping the paper, you're going to write your message. So you have to do this, use as much pressure as you can, write as hard as you can. 
but make sure you don't rip the paper. And sorry if it looks, my handwriting looks a little off. I am writing this upside down. And like I say, you're going to write as hard as you can. So when you're writing this, and you can use a code if you want, did I? I wrote that backwards. You know what, let's pretend it's part of the code. It's hard to tell when you're writing upside down, so I apologize, boys and girls. I usually don't write the number two backwards. It's a little disoriented when you're writing upside down. All right, so you write your message using hard pressure, and what you do is once you remove the paper, if you really, really look closely, you're not going to be able to see it on camera, but if you use enough pressure, if you wrote, very, wrote hard enough on the first piece of paper, you should see a cop copy of your message faintly on, on the second piece of paper. So that's kind of like an invisible-ish ink. Nobody else can see it. And then you can discard your original message. So, here's your message. Now, to reveal it, oh, and if you need more time, boys and girls, you can always pause in between steps. But to reveal it, what your friend would do is you take, take a pencil or a color pencil and lightly go over it. Now, if you've done this correctly, and I recommend using a smooth surface for, for this, boys and girls. This is a little bit of a rough table, so it may not appear. But it looks like it's appearing very nicely. And you're just going to use the side of your pencil to color over the message. And if you've done this correctly, you can see a faint copy of your message appearing. Like so. Like I said, this is probably not the best surface to write this on. Okay. So Actually, I'm looking at this, and the darker you do it, the more your message appears. So you could pro as I scroll up, you could probably see the message. Don't know if the camera will really capture it, but it looks like it looks like it re it revealed. 
Well, like I said, I probably should have used a smoother table for this because it was capturing the bumps of the table. So it really couldn't reveal the message that great. But I can still see it, which means it works out pretty well. So I'll give you a minute to finish revealing your message. And then we'll move on to the next one. So let's move on to the sec. Let me demonstrate the second invisible ink technique. This is a good one. This is also very simple to do, kind of it, sort of cheap, but also sort of simple. Uh, this is called the white crayon watercolor invisible ink technique. Now, this may be a little bit harder because e computer paper is not going to work with this. It's very, it'll be very thin and the watercolor will ruin the paper. So I would recommend having a water piece of watercolor paper or cardstock. And you'll already have a couple sheets of this in your, in your craft kit. And you'll also be given some watercolor, some liquid watercolor paint. Uh, you should, but you should also have on you a white crayon and a paintbrush. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take, what you do here is take your white crayon, the first thing, yeah, the first thing you do is take your white crayon and you're going to write your message onto the paper. Now, you're not really going to be able to see this because it's white, a white crayon on a white paper. You know what, I'm going to write the two not upside down this time. There we go. So, if you've done this right, you actually you really shouldn't be able to see the message I just wrote right now. I mean, you'll be able to see if you look closely, but if you look from far away, you're not going to be able to see it. And nobody else will be able to see it. So I'll give you a minute to finish up. And this one's a little bit messier, parents. The first one I showed was not quite as messy. And like I said, the first one I showed you is the fastest, is the quickest. It's the simple, it uses the simplest materials and it's the cheapest one. This one may be a little bit more expensive because of the paper and the watercolor paints. And sometimes the materials may be a little bit harder to catch and it is a little bit messier, but this is also a simple one. All right, everybody should be done by now. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my paintbrush, dip it in the watercolor paint. This is how to reveal. And you're just gonna go over the paper. And see, look what happens as I go over the paper. It's like magic, huh, boys and girls?
Isn't that cool? And you just keep going over it until the whole message is revealed. But how neat is that, boys and girls? You're painting and all of a sudden this message appears. And there you have it. That is the white crayon watercolor method of invisible ink. And you can, it's much easier to see the message with this, huh, boys and girls? But anyway, like I said, these are the cheapest two. This is the simplest to get the supplies for, the cheapest, and the, the least, the simplest way of doing invisible ink. I mean, this one's a bit messy, the other one's not, but like I said, there's other ones, but it's, it'll get a little more expensive, the ingredients are a little bit harder to come by, and some of them are a little bit more difficult to, to do. But if you're interested, you can look at the, like I said, you can look at the WikiHow link in the video description to find out the other methods of invisible ink. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed today's activity. I certainly enjoyed it with you. And in your worksheets, in your craft kits, you'll find some additional handwriting worksheets to practice at your own convenience. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's program. I certainly did, and I'm looking forward to next month. But please, check out the other programs that myself and the other children's librarians here have to offer at the West Hampton Free Library, whether it's virtual or in person. But until next time, this is Miss Brienne saying take good care of yourselves, have a great day, and I'll see you soon.